Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Ashley Watts. I'm president and CEO at the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, and thank you for taking time out of your morning to spend a little bit of time with us to hear about the Chamber's new publication, Kentucky's Winning Strategy. We're going to take about 30 minutes today and kind of go through this report and then obviously leave time for questions and answers. And I did want to say we are recording this webinar. We know sometimes this time may not be convenient for everyone, so we will be recording it and posting it and sending it out as well. So if for some reason you can't find the recording and you want to share that with someone, let us know. Uh, we are really excited today that you guys are joining us to hear a little bit about our Kentucky Winning Strategy, which is a new publication from the Kentucky Chamber that we released last month that really proposed a unifying vision for Kentucky's economic future. Uh, we're going to do this presentation in about 30 minutes, but we want to kind of start with the why and the what. Why we felt it was so important to produce this new vision for Kentucky's economic future and also what the document seeks to accomplish. And I do want to say with Kentucky's winning strategy, this is what we're kind of calling our vision plan for Kentucky's economic future. And you will see Kentucky's winning strategy as a theme and everything that the Kentucky Chamber does moving forward, whether that's events, our legislative agenda, or anything else that we produce, you're going to kind of see this as our kind of North Star. So after we talk about the why and the what, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Charles All, the Executive Director of the Chamber Center for Policy and Research, to give an in-depth overview of some of the document's key points and obviously get into some of the data. And then really one of the reasons we wanted to have this meeting this morning in Zoom is talk about how you as local chambers, local business leaders, local leaders can get involved and really help bring this vision for Kentucky's economic future to life. Um, this publication is something that the chamber and business leaders all across Kentucky have been discussing for several years now, and the origins of it can really be found in two challenges. The first challenge is that the economic set of, of, is that of the economic status quo here in Kentucky, which for decades has been average and in some cases, as I'm sure you guys are aware, below average. And we're always interested in how Kentucky stacks up and compares to other states when it comes to things like our business climate, economic potential. Uh, and we often talk about that here at the chamber of how do we compare against states like Indiana, Tennessee, North Carolina, uh, we look at states that are really growing their business climate and growing their businesses and how can we put policies in place and programs in place to do that as well. Uh, when you look at national rankings, Kentucky is often somewhere in the middle of the pack or somewhere in the back of the pack. And so this slide I just wanted to show kind of shows some examples of that. CNBC, America's Top States for Business, is something that a lot of business and business associations look at when it comes out. In 2022, we were 26. You can see that we're a little higher with the Area Development Magazine, Top States for Business, we're 18th. But you also see that Forbes' best states to start a business were 43rd. And so it's really kind of where Kentucky has been hanging. And we know over the last five and six years, there has been a lot of policy changes that have led to tremendous economic growth here in Kentucky. And we just want to make sure that we are continuing uh, to, to, to be on that same trajectory. And we've seen so much progress lately. But what do we need to do to continue to push Kentucky forward and put our state on that long-term trajectory to lead in these rankings, like we often see with some of our neighboring states? The second challenge is something that I'm sure we're all acutely aware of. I was watching the news this morning, and obviously we all know that it's a gubernatorial election year. And if you turn on the TV right now, you will obviously know that and you see commercials from both sides of the campaign. But it also is really the challenge that we seem to live in a world right now where no one can agree on anything. Uh, you see examples of this on the news and on TV and obviously social media, but it's really even gone deeper than that to where we see this at our family dinner table, tables, at holidays, at gatherings with friends, even at church. And it's unfortunate that survey data shows that about 86% of Americans think our country is greatly divided on the most important values, 86%. 
And this is one of the things that I've really, uh, uh, you know, kind of struggled with the last couple of years is how can the chamber really play a role in this and make sure that, you know, it's important that we all know that we can have civil disagreements and we have different ways to accomplish our goals, but we can do this civilly as Kentuckians and as Americans. And this is one of the reasons that the chamber has really gotten involved in civics education over the last couple of years. And actually this upcoming Friday, we're having our second annual civics bee with middle school students at the Kentucky State Fair. And so when you turn on the news, you look at social media, obviously the negative stuff gets more attention. But in reality, there is actually quite a bit that we all agree on. And these things do not get enough attention. And I'm talking about things that I think we all can agree are priorities like good jobs, population growth, a strong workforce, improving our health outcomes, a great quality of life, reliable infrastructure, and of course, a strong education system. And so while we're always going to be a country with different viewpoints on different topics, that is a good thing. That's what leads to a democracy, and it's good to have that civil discourse. Sometimes we focus on that negative, and it's too easy for us to forget about those common goals and lose focus. So how can we find a way to reorient the focus of our leaders in the state and in our communities on these shared priorities and these shared goals that we know matter to all Kentuckians across the Commonwealth? And so that's where we landed on Kentucky's winning strategy. And this is going to offer a strong response to these two challenges. Uh, first and foremost, this document outlines a unifying vision for economic growth that transcends political or personal divisions and seeks to put Kentucky on a path to long-term success. So we're talking about working together toward these shared priorities that we all can agree are good, like good jobs, population growth, workforce development, our good, you know, good health, roads, and education. Secondly, it's, goal, it's a goal-oriented plan that describes our vision for what success looks like. And we outline specifically what we mean when we describe success in specific areas. And really what we wanted out of this is to take a collaborative approach to finding success. Instead of saying, here are the exact things that must be done and here's the exact way that it must be done, we encourage you all as Kentucky leaders to use it really as a North Star and to work with us on turning this vision for economic success into a reality. So Kentucky's winning strategy, we wanted it to be tangible. We wanted a clear focus. We wanted things that we could all really rally around. And so we surveyed our board. We surveyed our membership. We worked with local chambers and local business leaders. And we came up with 10 specific areas that we view as critical to the economic success of Kentucky. These areas, as you can see here on the screen, tax reform, population growth, education, workforce, infrastructure, affordability, quality of life, signature industries often say you cannot have Kentucky without bourbon, without horses, health outcomes, and economic development. And with each of these areas, we outline our vision for what success means and also discuss some of our strengths and being self-aware some of our weaknesses in each area. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to Charles, who is the executive director of the Kentucky Chamber Center for Policy and Research, to take a little bit of a deeper dive into each of these issues. Thanks, Ashley, uh, and thank you all for joining us this morning. We've been really excited to get an opportunity to talk about this project that's been in the works for a really long time. As Ashley said, what I'm going to do here is go through all 10 of these different focus areas and give you a little bit of a sense of what we mean when we say tax reform, what we mean when we say population growth, but then also talk about that vision for success within each of these individual um, focus areas. And one of the things I want to highlight as we talk through this is that when we really thought through what types of metrics, what types of success metrics we wanted to have set for this, uh, we wanted to use a combination of quantitative things and also qualitative things. So specific numbers that we want to reach, but then also things that are more qualitative in nature that are a little more difficult to quantify. And so you're going to see a big mixture of those types of visions for success uh, within each of these categories. We're going to start with tax reform. Uh, long been the Kentucky Chamber's number one public policy priority. When we talk about tax reform, we're talking about cultivating a competitive state and local tax environment that supports growth, provides those necessary revenues for essential services, and is also attractive to businesses, skilled workers, and families. And so when we think about success in this category, one of the key things we're going to be looking for the next several years 
is how we rank on big national rankings like the Tax Foundation's um, Annual Business Tax Climate Competitiveness Index. Uh, Kentucky uh, has made great strides in this category. We're about 18th in the nation right now. What we want to see, though, is, is Kentucky placed firmly in the top 10. We also want to see the state continuing to phase out the individual income tax. This is a journey that the legislature started several years ago. We want to see that continued progress over the next several years. But in addition to that, Kentucky has often been a bit of a follower when it comes to tax reform. And something that we really want to be able to see happen within roughly the next 10 years is to put our state on the cutting edge of tax reform, setting an example for other states as opposed to following the lead for other states. And those are those are big categories for success, but these are things that we think are achievable. With population growth, uh, we want to grow Kentucky's population by making it one of the top states in the nation for both domestic and international migration. Uh, both of those components are going to be key for growing our population. And this is an area that Kentucky has struggled in over the past uh, few census. Just an example of that, in the most recent census, uh, Kentucky grew at roughly half the national rate, uh, right around 3.7, 3.6% growth. Uh, that's, that's fairly low uh, in comparison to other states in the nation as a whole. So what we want to see happen is we want to see Kentucky's growth surpass nationwide averages and also surpass our competitor states. Equally as important to that, though, is that we want to make sure this growth is spread out throughout the state as a whole. Uh, in Kentucky, we've seen a lot of population in sort of the Lexington, Louisville, Northern Kentucky areas. We're actually experiencing depopulation in some of our eastern Kentucky counties and some of our western Kentucky counties. What we want to see, though, is population growth throughout the state as a whole. We know it won't ever necessarily be even, but the goal would be to have the state as a whole growing in all of its individual regions. Education. Um, absolutely a, a key component in this vision plan. Um, what we talk about when we're talking about education is continuing to build and investing in a high quality K through 12 and post-secondary education system focused on workforce development and high growth industries and post-secondary training. What we're gonna be looking for here is to see Kentucky position itself as a leading state for K through 12 educational outcomes. We wanna become a national model for attracting and retaining high quality teachers. And we also want to surpass our own post-secondary uh, attainment goals that the state has set for itself. Um, our council for uh, post-secondary education um, set a goal to have 60% uh, of our adult population with some sort of certification or degree by the time we hit 2030. Uh, we want to blow that out of the water. Uh, and that's that's the, the long-term vision on, on those fronts. Workforce. This has been a, obviously a key area that we've spent a lot of time talking about at the chamber. It's a major issue within Kentucky's business community and within economic development. Uh, with workforce, we want to set Kentucky on a path to rapidly grow the size of its workforce by removing barriers to work for current residents and attracting skilled workers from other states and around the world. And what we're talking about here in terms of a vision for success is we want to see the growth of our workforce surpass national averages and also surpass competitor states. This is, again, an area that we've uh, we've struggled in a fair amount. We also want to see a fast-growing prime-age workforce. And so that's going to include your folks that are between the ages of 25 and 54. That's our, our, our the bulk of our workforce and arguably the most productive component of our workforce. Uh, we've actually seen a decline in that population over the past decade or so, and we are hoping to see that particular group grow even faster than other groups. And then also in terms of workforce participation, something that gets frequently talked about in Kentucky, um, we have long been in the bottom 10 for this ranking. Our goal is to see Kentucky placed in the top 10 states for workforce participation around the nation. Infrastructure. Sustainably invest in a world-class multimodal infrastructure and transportation system that reflects Kentucky's status as a global logistics hub. Here, we're going to be looking at organizations such as the American Society for Civil Engineers that produces um, annual rankings on state infrastructure systems. Kentucky has kind of been in the middle uh, on those. We want to see high ranks, um, A scores. In addition to that, though, we want to make sure that we have a long-term sustainable funding strategy for infrastructure in Kentucky. Right now, we're predominantly reliant on fairly low um, fuel taxes in this state. That's not going to last much longer uh, in, in, this, in this state or in the nation as a whole. And so we need to come up with a way to make sure that we, we project out infrastructure funding for the next several years, that it's on a sustainable path and growing so that we can continue investing. Equally as important, we want to continue to see Kentucky adding direct flights uh, in and out of Kentucky. That's a key component for talent attraction and also a key component for economic development. Affordability. 
Uh, Kentucky has long had a status as an affordable state, both in terms of housing, energy, and general cost of living. We want to make sure we protect Kentucky's status as an affordable state for working families by maintaining access to reliable, low-cost energy and ensuring a, gro a growing housing stock to fit the needs of current and future residents. We can use government data to compare our electricity rates to other states. Generally, Kentucky has fared really well in that category. We want to protect that and make sure that we continue to have low energy rates. At the same time, we need to make sure that our housing stock is growing and also modernizing so that we have available housing for this population that we're trying to attract. And we also have good quality housing. Both of those components are going to be really key to continue making Kentucky a, um, an affordable state. Quality of life. We want to foster a uniquely desirable quality of life in Kentucky with safe communities, original cultural amenities, reliable and accessible essential services, and wide access to the Commonwealth's recreational resources. Here, we're going to be looking at things like low crime rates and also well-staffed law enforcement agencies. And we can also track things like food deserts, healthcare deserts, childcare deserts, broadband deserts. And we want to make sure that we are reducing the prevalence of those types of deserts all throughout Kentucky. And that's going to be a strong indicator for us in terms of the quality of life that we have in the state, also a key component for talent attraction and uh, growing our population and workforce. As Ashley said, you, you really can't have Kentucky without bourbon and, and, and horses. Uh, that is an absolute key strength in Kentucky. And we want to make sure that we are fully leveraging the economic potential of Kentucky's signature, signature industries to grow jobs, attract tourists, and cultivate the Commonwealth's unique brand. What that means for us is continued growth within both the bourbon industry and also the equine industry, but also ancillary industries that are attached to those, to those larger growth areas. Uh, we're also going to be looking for things, though, like rising tourism numbers. This is something that we can track. Uh, we've been on a good trajectory over the past several years, but we want to see continued growth in those tourism numbers, such as the impact of tourism on Kentucky's economy and the number of individuals that are visiting our state. Health outcomes. We want to significantly improve both physical and mental health outcomes for Kentuckians in support of workforce development and a higher quality of life. And places we can look for for this are things such as declines in smoking rates, declines in obesity, and declines in substance use disorder. These are all measurable things that uh, we, we, we can track. And um, these are things that um, we want to see continue improving. Kentucky generally ranks very poorly in these areas. This is another space where we'd like to see ourselves move up into the top 10. And then finally, economic development. Uh, we want to strategically foster economic development and high-wage job growth in all areas of Kentucky, including rural communities and regions experiencing deep population and economic transitions. A key concern, uh, I think, for all of us in Kentucky is that we are seeing depopulation in a lot of our rural areas. That's a trend that we want to see reversed over the next several years. Similarly, we have some inequities in terms of unemployment rates, with low unemployment rates in some communities, high unemployment rates in other communities. The goal needs to be to take those communities with those high unemployment rates and bring them in line with our uh, with our lower unemployment communities. And that's that's a key goal for developing our economy as a whole. So we have lots of goals here, uh, lots of things to talk about. And uh, when we get to the Q&A portion, we can, of course, get into some of the more details on these. But with that, I'm going to hand things back over to Ashley uh, to talk a little more about how you all can play a key role in this. Thank you, Charles. And he took a deep dive kind of into the 10 factors that are going into the winning strategy. And again, uh, before we wrap up, we will do questions and answers. And so I should have said this at the beginning, feel free to put your questions in the chat box and we will be able to answer those in the presentation. Uh, the key message that I hope you all take away after this webinar is that Kentucky's winning strategy really is a unifying vision for economic success in the Commonwealth. Uh, good jobs, a growing population and workforce better health outcomes, a better education system, reliable infrastructure, afford affordability. These are things that we all can agree on and really that can be focal points as we look forward. And the timing of this, of this publication was not a coincidence. We all know that it's a gubernatorial election year here in Kentucky. And we really wanted to make sure that Kentucky's winning strategy is part of the conversation moving forward when there are debates and conversations, looking at who's going to be kind of leading, you know, leading the state and setting 
having that vision. And we at the Kentucky Chamber, we're having our annual dinner on September 20th, and we will be having a gubernatorial forum with Governor Bashir and Attorney General Cameron. And all the questions that evening are going to be centered around Kentucky's winning strategy. And so it really will be a theme for the chamber moving forward. And our hope is that it's a theme for uh, all elected officials and community leaders going forward as well. My challenge to you on this call is to really ask yourself how you can contribute to make this vision for Kentucky a success. And here on this slide are just some examples. Uh, we talked earlier about social media and how sometimes there's some negativity, obviously, in social media. But I challenge you to post something about Kentucky's winning strategy and be a positive story about how we can reach the success that we want to have. Obviously, you can share posts from the Kentucky Chamber on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram. And there's probably going to be a couple more platforms by the time uh, this is over. But those are the ones right now that the Kentucky Chamber utilizes. And then help us tell the story of how your community or your company uh, is working to implement Kentucky's winning strategy. What are you doing to make Kentucky the best place to live and to work and to do business and raise a family? And then incorporate the plan into relevant presentations. Many of you all on this call uh, you know, are influencers in your community and in your state and in the business community. And if you're doing any kind of presentations, we would love to help with that. Incorporate this plan into that. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Ago, I was at Toyota and they were announcing a big education initiative and the new president of Toyota in his speech continually talked about Kentucky's winning strategy and how it really is it should be the North Star for what we're all doing here in Kentucky. And then lastly, you know, here at the chamber, we work a lot with elected, elected officials. Refer to this plan and ask questions when you're meeting with those local officials, whether it's a, a local level, state level, federal level, talk about this plan, talk about this vision, and ask what they are doing to help with it. I think that's one of the most important things that we can do. And so really to, to, to wrap up before we do any kind of questions, and again, you can put those in the chat, um, you can find the plan at kychamber.com. Uh, you can stay tuned in on the Kentucky Chamber's new site, the bottom line, which is kychamberbottomline.com. Obviously follow us on social media. And over the next several months, we are going to be publishing a series of stories to highlight the successes, as well as taking a deep dive into the data and the recommendations to achieve Kentucky's winning strategy. And so it really is going to be a theme for the chamber moving forward, and we're going to incorporate it in all of our work. So at this time, I'm going to wrap up, and I don't see any questions right now or anything in the chat. Um, but don't feel don't be, don't be shy. Feel free to put those in there. But I'll turn it over to Charles, as I typically do, if you know Charles and myself, to correct anything that I that I shouldn't have said or anything that I left out. Uh, I will turn it over to Charles to kind of give any kind of closing comments, and then we'll do any questions and answers if you guys have those. And again, this is recorded, and so we can feel free to share that as well. So Charles, I'll turn it back over to you. And I, I have no edits for, for, for you, Ashley. Um, I do see a couple of questions coming in on my end. Um, and so I'll, I think this first one here that I'm seeing might be a good one for you. Um, you know, you mentioned a little bit about how it's important to get this, this vision plan in front of elected officials and sort of inject it into the, the broader political discourse and the, the policy discourse that's out there. Could you talk a little more about what you view as effective strategies to kind of get this in front of elected officials, get this in front of candidates, and to try to make this something that they're talking about as opposed to some of the other more divisive issues that we, we hear more about? That's a great question. So thank you to whoever submitted it. And I think that's one of, like we said, one of the real reasons we wanted to do this kind of very positive vi vision plan for Kentucky is because we know how divisive everything is. I mean, you just have to turn on the news, turn on social media. Like we even said, sometimes talking to your family and friends. And this really, we wanted this to be kind of the North Star, the things that we all can agree on. And what I've always said is the beauty about America, the beauty about Kentucky is that I think we all have kind of these common goals. We can all agree that we want good paying jobs. We want good infrastructure. We want our kids to go to good schools. Sometimes our strategies may be different on how to get there, and that's okay, but it's important to have those conversations. And so from our perspective at the chamber, we're going to be you know, hopefully influencing the governor's race with this document. We're going to be asking them questions at gubernatorial forum. We're also going to be putting out um, an election guide. So we do this with governor's races. We've done this in the past, but we're going to be asking them specifically, the two gubernatorial candidates, 
what are their visions and what are their goals for success in terms of every single of the 10 kind of uh, the, the areas that we have outlined in this report. On a little bit more local level, uh, how you can help is we will have this on our website. We will have some printed out versions if you want. We're going to put this with our chamber newsletter in the next couple of weeks. But let us know if you have if you want to talk to local officials or your elected leaders about it. Just basically ask them the question that we've seen that, that the Ch Kentucky Chamber has this new vision plan, Kentucky's winning strategy that lays out these 10 key areas. What is your vision for success in these areas mean? Are you working on it? Do you want our help? Do you want our input? And so I think you all as business leaders, as community leaders have access. And what I've always said, I, I have been uh, in the advocacy and lobbying world for about 20 years. And I meet with legislators all the time and they obviously know we work with the chamber and we're here in Frankfurt. But when they hear from you all in your community, in the grocery store, at church, or at, at any kind of community gathering, that really does mean a lot. You all are their constituents. And so I would encourage you just to kind of make that conversation, make that outreach. We'll also, from the Chamber's perspective, have some tools on how you can do that. We'll have some easy ways that you can email your legislators about specific areas. Uh, and so we can always help with that as well. I would also encourage you to talk to your local Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are very close with all a uh, hundred plus chambers of commerce throughout Kentucky. And so they're going to be tied into this vision plan as well. And I think the beauty of it is that it's not just this kind of uh, high level state plan. It really is about the community involvement. I mean, when you talk about affordability and quality of life and education, those are very local issues. Those are community issues. Uh, a lot of that big picture vision does come from the state level, but how it's implemented really does come from that community level. And so I would encourage just those conversations, uh, but we'll also, I think that's a great question, Charles that we can kind of in the in the future maybe do some action oriented webinars or some emails on this is how you contact your legislator here's some draft emails here's some draft conversations but I think really just kind of starting those conversations and asking what is your vision what is your plan for some of these challenges that we see here in Kentucky is a great way to start out and we also had another really quick question about sort of how we went about developing some of our, our metrics for this or our, our visions for success within these individual focus areas. Um, and I can speak to that, you know, very briefly. This, this um, publication is ultimately the result of numerous conversations with business leaders, other stakeholders in Kentucky, and especially the Kentucky Chamber Board of Directors, um, who all had opportunities to provide a lot of great input and great feedback on this. And so we we brought in a lot of those, those sort of visions for success within these areas and brought that into the report. We also wanted to be careful, though, to make sure that we didn't set up, set ourselves up for failure. And we looked at a lot of other plans like this that have been developed throughout the nation and other states and other communities. And we would see things like, you know, hitting this extremely specific number by X year um, that could be really problematic from time to time because there's so many things that can happen uh, in society that are completely unpredictable, such as a pandemic um, and, and major economic downturns and things like that. So we wanted to have more flexible metrics, such as you know being within the top 10 in comparison to other states or continued progress on phasing out our income tax as opposed to saying we have to have the income tax phased out by this specific time period. So we wanted to have um, some flexibility there uh, to make sure that these are these are reachable goals and attainable ones, while at the same time being very ambitious and community driven. Charles, I see a question here about how can we access this recording. We will send this out to everyone that is registered. We can send that out to you so you will get it in your inbox. And we'll probably also have it uh, on our website or on social media as well. But we will send it to you all through uh, the email in which you registered for this webinar. And I think we are right at 30 minutes. We tried to keep this short. We, we know how busy you all are, but we really appreciate you guys taking time out of your morning to learn a little bit more about Kentucky's winning strategy and to really give a primer on kind of what's going to be our North Star and our guiding document uh, from the chamber perspective. And so we just encourage you guys to get involved, reach out to us uh, if you have any questions about this, follow us on social media, and hopefully you will, you know, join with us on this vision. Uh, and I just want to thank you guys for joining in. Thank you, Charles, for all the work he's put into this as well. If if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you all. Have a great day.